In the next few minutes, you're going to learn how to give your FTC robot the ability to perfectly detect and track game pieces using a Limelight 3A. You're going to have a complete understanding of how to use a Limelight 3A's targeting data for color detection in FTC, even if you're an absolute beginner. Being able to use targeting data for color from Limelight 3A is going to help you build an incredibly consistent autonomous routine. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've spent over a decade teaching robotic and design. I've coached FTC teams to the national and international levels, and I've seen firsthand how well implemented a vision system like this can completely change a team season. I'm going to walk you through the whole process step by step. We'll start with the correct configuration file, and we'll jump to the Java code line by line to show you exactly how to get that targeting data from the limelight. And finally, I'll explain what you need to do with that data once you've actually got it, so you can have your robot reliably pick up its game implements this season. This tutorial also works in just about any season that you need it to, as the targeting data I have set up for this is season agnostic. Now, before we get further into this, this tutorial assumes that you already have a few color detection pipelines set up so that you're already able to pick up what your specific colors are. If you do not have pipeline set up already, I've got a video in the description down below about how you can calibrate your Limelight 3A to be able to pick up the correct colors for specific pipelines, so for things like red or blue specifically. So for my color detection setup here, I just have a generic little red and yellow and blue chips that I've got set up here. They are two centimeters by six centimeters by two millimeters just set up on a gray pillowcase here to be able to simulate that FTC field. Now wiring up your limelight is quite simple. You just have to take your control hub, take the USB A port and plug it into the USB 3.0 port that is the blue one on your control hub. Then you can take your limelight itself and go ahead and plug that into the USB C cable. Then we'll go ahead and turn this on and we'll get our driver station booted up. Now to set up the configuration file, what you need to do is you need to go ahead and tap these three dots to open up the hamburger menu, or sorry, meatball menu. Choose configure robot, or go ahead and edit one of your test benches, and you're going to have to go ahead and click scan. Once you scan, you're going to see something that's going to show up. Actually, I'll do this in an empty one just so you can see what it's going to look like. If you go ahead and press scan, show that an Ethernet device is going to show up. And we can go ahead and rename this Ethernet device to... Lime Light. Don't change the IP address. Choose Done. Go ahead and choose Save. Then you need to select Activate. And Activate is going to restart your robot. And your Lime Light's now configured and ready to rock. So let's head on over to the desktop. Now, one thing I want to share before we get started is right from Lime Light's official documentation do the simple thing first. Yeah? The best software teams often use the simplest approaches. So try to keep this simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a limelight. And what it's going to do is it's going to grab the object as close to that center. And it's going to try to tell us what its target X is, how far away we are on the X axis, target Y, how far we are on the Y axis, and then target area, which is how big the object is showing. So let's go ahead and grab that for the targeted pixel that we have selected. So inside this team code, I'm going to right click, I'm going to make a new Java class. I'm going to call this one Limelight Test or Limelight Example, whatever you want. This is going to extend the op mode class. And for op mode, we always need two methods. We need a public void initialization and we need a public void loop. Next, we need to actually make that Limelight object. So we're going to make a private Limelight 3A called Limelight 3A. Now keep in mind, this Limelight 3A, capital L, but lowercase l in the middle. And then for a variable name, both of them are lower. That's a typical gotcha in this uh, Limelight setup. Then for the hardware, we need to go ahead and say that Limelight 3A is equal to hardwaremap.get. And we are going to get the Limelight 3A.class, comma, and then in strings, it's going to be exactly as you set up in your configuration file. In this case, we called it limelight, all lowercase. Then we're going to tell it what pipeline we wanted to use. So in this case, we're going to go limelight.3a dot pipeline switch. And you are going to have to set up the pipeline you want. In my case, I have two pipelines set up. Pipeline zero. Zero is red. Sorry, actually zero is blue. 
and one is red. So I have a blue pipeline and a red pipeline. Depending on how many colors you're trying to select, you may have to have multiple pipelines here. Then once you switch your pipeline, you can then limelight.3a slash start, and that actually starts up your pipeline. Now, rather than doing that inside the initialization statement, I'm actually going to put the void start. I'm actually going to put this pipeline start at the start position as opposed to the init section. The limelight uses quite a bit of energy when it's running, so I'm only going to run it once we actually push the start button rather than the init. Uh, if you find that is producing a little bit of delay for you, I'd be really surprised if it was, you can go ahead and move that back to the initialization loop. Then we're going to go back inside the loop and we're actually going to get that data. So we're going to say limelight result, limelight result is going to be equal to limelight 3a dot get latest results. So that is going to return a whole bunch of data for us that we can end up pulling back. Then we're going to say if that limelight result is not equal to null and the limelight result dot is valid, then we're actually going to do something with the data. So when the limelight first boots up, typically it will return a null value for you. So you have to put in that we're not receiving a null value. So the first time it runs through this loop, we're not going to get null. And then uh, the is valid means that it actually found something that was in that blue bounding box we made from the previous tutorial. All right, so we're going to print out our data so we can say that. So we're going to say telemetry.addData. And this is going to be our target x offset. And we're going to grab the limelight result dot, oops, not capitals, limelight result dot get tx. We'll do the same thing for telemetry.addData. And this is the target y offset and limelight result dot get ty and then telemetry dot add data. And this is the target area offset. And this is limelight result dot get ta. And that's it. So let's go ahead and let's run this on our code. It looks like we're throwing an error for some reason. Oh, I forgot to close off that. So that is it for how we actually get this up and running as a really quick start guide. So let's go ahead and run this on a rev control hub. Actually, we need to put in at autonomous so that it actually pops up. Let's go ahead and boot this up. Now on our driver hub, we're gonna go ahead and select autonomous. We're gonna grab the limelight test. I move this out of the way, and I'm just going to just have my limelight sit here and held looking at some of my cubes. I'm going to initialize, and I'm going to run this. So we've actually managed to find a target here, and let's go ahead and look at this driver hub so we can see where the things are going. And we can see that of this specific point that we're looking at, our target X offset, we are about five off, so that means we're about five pixels to the right. For the Y offset, we're negative four, which means we're four pixels down from where it is, and then our target offset is up. So if I were to take my limelight here and I were to move it up and down, left and right, we can actually see, well, let's in it and run that one more time. We can actually see if we can get closer to that object until the point where we can actually get our X offset to be zero. So now we have to decide, what do we do with this information? Okay, I now know how far away I am on the X axis. I now know how far away I'm on the Y axis, and I know how far away I am based on area. So it's up to you to, if you know your piece is here, and your target X is about seven degrees off this way, and about Y angle off this way, or Y is off this way, it's up to you to now decide how can you move your robot to move your X so that it's in line, so your X is just about zero. And then you have a choice. You can either use your target Y, so you move your robot up close to the object till the target Y is within your acceptable range, or the target area, which is how close that object is your camera or how much of your camera that space is filling up. So once you hit that threshold, be it that Y or be it that target area, then you can go ahead and actually actuate your, your intake, your outtake, whatever it may be, your actuator so that you can actually go ahead and pick this thing up. Uh, in the future, I may have a video on how to do something like that. And it's a really simple setup. Uh, let me know if you were interested in doing that. Otherwise, I hope you found this tutorial helpful on getting your limelight up and started. Uh, in the context of a first text challenge robot. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. I'll try my best to answer them. 
Otherwise, and best of luck out there this season with some color detection, and I hope to see your robot up on the field.